A couple of months ago, I posted a video of this little thing, which is a custom RC light controller that I built for my armor felony. And this original version was designed specifically to work with a Spectrum Smart ESC and receiver, and there are a number of neat features that you can see in the original video that take advantage of that system. What I'd like to show you today is this, which is probably now the most over-designed and over-configurable RC light controller in the world. Inside this box is one of these, which is essentially the same as the original design, but shrunk down onto a custom printed circuit board and with the addition of two extra input channels and three extra lighting channels. And these extra input channels mean that this version can work with any RC gear and not just the Spectrum system. So let's have a look at what it can do. So here we have a controller hooked up to an RC receiver and to this little test board with lots of different lights on it. And at the moment the controller is in sleep mode and displaying this relaxing breathing effect on some of the LEDs. But as soon as I touch any of the controls on the transmitter, the controller wakes up and turns the main lights on. I can flip between different modes using the toggle switch on the transmitter or turn them off altogether. And I can also change modes using a button on the controller itself. So even if you've not got an aux channel on your uh, transmitter, you can still use this controller. You just lose the ability to switch modes remotely. We've got working brake lights, which in this case, I've got them combined with tail lights and also working turn signals. And on this particular one, I've got it set up so that if I press the other way on the toggle switch, it flashes the front headlights. So that's all great, but you can buy controllers on Amazon for $10 that will do most of this stuff. What sets this one apart is the extent to which you can configure it. So you may have noticed that when I was pressing the brakes, uh, the brakes coming on every time I pushed away on the throttle lever. And most RCs, the first press will apply the brakes and the second press will actually go into reverse. And you don't really want the brake lights to come on when you're reversing. So the controller's got a built-in menu which allows us to configure things like this. And we access that using the button on the transmitter or the controller. You press and hold it until you see the second flash. One, two. And now we need to go to the second option on this menu. We'll go into that. And then we'll go into the second option on this menu, which is the brake mode setting. I'll go into that. And I can now type, cycle through three different brake modes. And I go to the second one there. Press and hold to select that. And now I can just tap the throttle to get out of the menu. And now when I operate the brakes, the brakes come on the first time I press away. And then the second time it assumes we're in reverse. I tap the throttle, it's reset and the brake lights come on. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, configuring the controller through this menu can get pretty tortuous. It's very easy to get lost in a twisty maze of short clicks, long clicks and counting light flashes. And that's where this comes in. We can plug the controller straight into a laptop using an ordinary USB cable and configure it much more easily. So with the controller connected to my laptop, I launch my web browser, open this web page, hit connect, select the controller, and I've now got easy access to all of the settings. Changing the brake mode is now just a simple matter of changing this drop down here. I won't go through all the different settings, but I will just highlight a few of them. One of the things I can configure is how fast the lights come on and off. So for example, if I operate the turn signals at the moment, the, uh, the lights come on, off, straight on, straight off. If I adjust this fade speed control, it gives a sort of soft on, soft off effect. You can see that the turn signals come on and off more slowly now, um, more like uh, traditional light bulbs rather than LEDs. Uh, one of the other things I can configure is how soon the turn signals come on. If you look at the moment, the turn signals come on pretty much as soon as I start turning the steering in either direction. But if I change this steering threshold up to say about there, I now have to turn the steering pretty much all the way before the turn signals come on. So unlike most light controllers, the function of the different output channels isn't fixed. I can configure each one to do exactly what I want. So as I go down the list of channels on the left hand side, you'll see the lights light up so I know which channel I'm configuring. And I'm going to go into the tail lights. And you can see, for example, uh, this one is configured to be off in mode one, on uh, dimly in mode two, and come on when I operate the brake lights. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust this so that it also comes on when I operate the turn signal. And I'll do the same for output six, but turn that on for right turn. And you'll see now when I operate the turn signals, uh, the brake lights come on as well, giving us com the US style combined brake light and turn signal. 
So I can configure the other channels in exactly the same way. Uh, one last thing I'll show you uh, is a new setting I've been working on, which is an emergency lighting mode to simulate emergency vehicle lighting. So I can change the function of the secondary button, that's clicking down on the uh, toggle switch, and switch that to be emergency lights. Now if I press that, it flashes a, an emergency lighting pattern on whichever lighting channels I've configured it to be on. All the changes are saved as soon as I make them, so when I'm done editing, I can either hit disconnect or simply pull the cable out, and we're ready to go. The USB connection also makes it really easy to update the firmware that's running on the controller, and I'm continually developing it to add new features. If you've got any ideas for new things you'd like to see, I'd very much like to hear them, so please do leave a comment down below. I've also made all the software for the controller available as open source, so if you're into coding and want to have a go at adding features yourself, you can do that. I'm planning to have some of these controllers available for sale in the near future, so if you're interested in getting one or you just like to follow the project, please do hit like and subscribe, and I'll post updates here soon.